Now let us see what are the problems we encounter in the carburetors. During the field operation there may be various problems, various snags may be reported by the pilots or the engineers may observe the snags during maintenance. So, let us see what are the common snags being observed and what are the rectification actions. So, you may experience rough idle. Now, the engine operation in other speeds, cruise speed at high throttle speed may, might be operating satisfactorily, but the idle operation must, might be rough. So, in case if your engine is operating roughly in the idle range, then what are your causes? What may be the probable causes of rough idle? It may be that your idle mixture is misadjusted, idle mixture is not properly adjusted, your primer might be leaking, it might be faulty or it might be leaking, the primer lines might be cracked and there might be leaks in the intake manifold. So, several reasons of rough idle operation, misadjusted idle mixture, in case if the mixture is not adjusted, idle mixture is not adjusted properly, then the rectification action will be to readjust the idle mixture as per the steps specified in the concerned engine manual. Now, in case if the primer is leaking or the primer is not operating satisfactorily, then we need to disconnect the primer line the, and cap off so that the problem can be tested. So, the fuel which is leaking it should be capped off and we need to see whether your lines, the primer lines are cracked or there is some leakage in the unions, in the elbows installed or whether your primer system is not operating satisfactorily apart from the leaks. So, we need to take proper rectification action accordingly. Now, in case you see that there are leaks in the manifold, in the intake manifold, the rectification action will be to pressurize the manifold and test for the leaks. In case we observe the leaks, then proper rectification action has to be taken to seal those leaks by putting some gaskets, by re renewing the gaskets or by taking appropriate action as specified in the engine manual. Next problem might be poor idle cutoff. Now, the engine is switched off by putting the mixture to the idle cutoff position. So, from the rich condition, the mixture control is gradually moved towards the idle cutoff position and idle cut at idle cutoff, your engine cuts off because the fuel supply is stopped and the engine stops running. Now, in case if the idle cutoff is poor, then what may be the probable causes? mixture linkage not full travel. So, the linkage, the mixture through which you can adjust the linkage, the complete linkage is not having full travel. Mixture valve being pulled up by misaligned mixture cable. Again, this is a problem of the mixture cable, the mixture setting that your cable might be misaligned. Then faulty or leaky primer, again the primer is here in picture, the primer might be faulty or it might be leaking. In that case also you may experience poor idle cutoff. You may also experience rough idle in case your primer lines are cracked or your primer lines are leaking or the primer is not operating satisfactorily. So, here also in case of poor idle cutoff, your primer might be the culprit and 
Another reason might be that your idle speed is adjusted too high. In that case also, you may experience poor idle cutoff. Now, what are the rectification actions? In case if the mixture linkage is not to full travel, then we again have to adjust the mixture linkage, we have to adjust, they are all mechanical connections and we have to adjust it so that you have a proper full travel of mixture linkage. Mixture wall being pulled up by misaligned mixture cable, again the mixture cable has to be realigned and it has to be properly fixed straight with the mixture lever. lever. In case if the primer is faulty or leaking, again <coughs> it should be disconnected, capped off and the problem should be rectified accordingly. In case if it is leaking, then we need to fix the leaks. In case if the system is faulty, then we need to look at the system. Whatever replacements are required, it, the proper replacements should be done as specified in the engine manual. In case if the idle speed adjustment is too high, in that case we need to readjust the idle speed, the engine idle speed as per the engine manual. Now another problem, we are trying to adjust idle speed, but we are not able to adjust it, we are not able to bring the idle in the proper range what might be the reason? It may be again the primer might be faulty or leaky, the primer lines might be cracked and there might be leaks in the intake manifold. So, here you can see that the leakage in the primer, leakage in the intake manifold can be very dangerous, can lead to various problems. It the leakage in the intake manifold, the leakage in the primer has resulted in rough idle, has re resulted in poor idle cutoff and it and we are not able to adjust idle speed also. In case of intake manifold leaks, we are not able to adjust idle and we have ex we can experience rough idle operation also. Whereas, in case of leaked primer lines or faulty primer system, rough idle, poor idle cutoff and idle not being able to adjust, these may be the problems. Now, in case if your mixture is running rich and leaning mixture minimizes the problem. Now, the pilot op reports that the mixture is running rich and while leaning, it minimizes the problem. What might be the reason? Again, the primer is in picture, faulty or leaky primer and idle mixture not adjusted properly. So, in case of leaking primer or faulty primer, same rectification actions what have been discussed earlier we need to disconnect and cap off to test for problem and in case if idle mixture is misadjusted, then we need to adjust the idle mixture as per the steps given in the engine manual to obtain 20 to 50 rpm rise. In case if we are able to obtain engine rpm rise of 25 to 50, when we move the mixture control lever from full rich condition to idle cutoff condition, we have to gradually move the mixture control from full rich to the idle position. During the movement of the mixture control lever, we need to observe the RPM rise. In case if we are able to obtain RPM rise of 25 to 50 RPM, then it indicates that the mixture, the idle mixture is adjusted properly. So, when your idle mixture is not adjusted properly, we need to adjust as per the steps given in the engine manual by the manufacturer and ad adjust the idle mixture to obtain 25 to 50 rpm rise. So, these were the 
problems, some of the problems associated with the carburetor. Now, let us move to the fuel injection system. So, now what is fuel injection? Basically, fuel injection is the introduction of fuel or fuel air mixture in the induction system or combustion chamber by means of a pressure source. So, the fuel is injected, fuel is being injected in the induction system or the combustion chamber by a pressure source. This injection of fuel, this introduction of fuel in the induction system or the combustion chamber is termed as fuel injection. The pressure source must be other than the pressure differential created by airflow through the venturi of a carburetor. Like in case of simple carburetors, the basic carburetors, the venturi of a carburetor was creating a pressure differential and that pressure differential was the metering force. In the case of fuel injection, pressure source must be other than the pressure differential created by airflow through the venturi of a carburetor. The common pressure source is an injection pump which is available in different types. So, in case of fuel injection systems, the common source of pressure is an injection pump, we call it a fuel injector and these are available in different styles, different types by the different manufacturers. A fuel injection system discharges the fuel into the intake port of each cylinder just ahead of the intake valve or directly into the combustion chamber of each cylinder. So, in this system, in this fuel injection system, the fuel is directly discharged into the intake port of each cylinder or into the combustion chamber. In case if it is being introduced in the intake port of each cylinder, it will be just ahead of the intake valve and it might also be introduced in the combustion chambers of each cylinder. So, the fuel being injected directly to each cylinder either in the intake port just ahead of the intake valve or inside the combustion chamber. Now, what are the advantages of fuel injection system? Basically, carburetors were used in older aircrafts, in modern aircrafts, most of the aircrafts, smaller aircrafts, piston engine aircrafts, reciprocating engine are using fuel injection system. So, there have has to be some advantages why this system is so commonly being used nowadays. So, let us see what are the advantages of a fuel injection system. The first advantage is less danger of induction system icing as the drop in temperature due to fuel vaporization takes place in or near the cylinder. We have seen in case of carburetors, the most common problem being observed was the induction system icing. We have read about the induction system icing. In case of fuel injectors, this problem is eliminated because the fuel is being inducted to the, in the intake manifold just ahead of the intake valve or in the con combustion chamber. So, the induction system icing, there is minimum chances of having induction system icing because the drop in temperature due to fuel vaporization is taking place either inside the cylinder or near the cylinder. Now, this fuel air mixture being delivered to each in cylinder is being delivered uniformly. So, each cylinder is having a uniform delivery of fuel air mixture. Better fuel air ratio control. So, in, in case of carburetors, there was a problem where different cylinders might have a different fuel air ratio, but in case of fuel injectors, you have better control of fuel air ratio for each cylinder. Instant acceleration of engine after idling with no tendency to stall. In case of injectors, in case of fuel injection systems, the engine can accelerate instant instantly after idling and there is no tendency to stall. 
the engine efficiency is also increased and the maintenance problems are reduced there are less maintenance problems so these are some of the advantages a fuel injection system has over the carburetors so that is the reason why in modern aircrafts fuel injection system is so widely used now what is a fuel injection system let us see the fuel injection system is a continuous flow system so it is a continuous flow system the system comprises of an injector flow divider and a fuel discharge nozzle so there are some basic components in the system it has an injector it has a flow divider and it has some nozzles fuel discharge nozzles for each cylinder it measures engine air consumption and uses air flow forces to control fuel flow to the engine now again this system this will measure the flow of air the engine air consumption and based on the air being consumed it will meter the fuel accordingly so basically the system is using is measuring the engine air consumption and uses the air flow forces to control fuel flow to the engine so according to the air flow the fuel is metered fuel to individual cylinders is distributed using a fuel flow divider and air bleed fuel discharge nozzles so the fuel is coming from the aircraft fuel system to the engine driven fuel pump from the engine driven fuel pump the fuel is being supplied to the injector injector is basically a pump which is supplying fuel which is metering fuel according to the air flow consumption according to the throttle setting according to the throttle set by the pilot in the cockpit the air flow will vary according to the throttle setting and as per the air flow the injector will meter the fuel this metered fuel goes to the flow divider which will distribute the fuel it will monitor the fuel flow it will distribute the fuel to the air bleed fuel discharge nozzles which are there for each cylinder so fuel from the injector is coming to the flow divider and from flow divider is, is going to the fuel discharge nozzles here in the diagram in the slide you can see this is your fuel injector basically a fuel injector then this is your flow divider and this is your discharge nozzle so now this is your throttle body as per the opening of the throttle your air is con air consumption is measured and based on the air consumption your fuel flow your fuel is metered and this injector will meter the fuel this metered fuel goes to the flow divider and flow divider will distribute the fuel to the respective discharge nozzles and here you have a gauge to measure the fuel pressure also so this is basically a system to of a fuel injection system and a basic diagram where in general you need to understand that this is your injector this is your flow divider and these are your discharge nozzles and these are some of the gauges let us see what is a fuel injector in the figure you can see a typical fuel injector the fuel injector assembly has the following sections an air flow section a regulator section and a fuel metering section so basically the injector the fuel injector which you can understand as a pump it has got three sections a air flow section a regulator section and a fuel metering section you can see in the figure it has got various levers also we will understand what are these levers and here this stop opening you can see this is your throttle body this is the place from where the air is entering 
inside and based on the air consumption this unit will meter the fuel and this metered fuel will go to the flow divider and the flow divider will distribute the fuel to the respective discharge nozzles. Now in the injector as we have seen that it has got three parts the air flow section, regulator section and the fuel metering section. Let us see what is the air flow section all about. So this air flow section in the slide you can see a figure. Let us see first understand this figure. This is an air inlet just now in the previous slide I have shown you from where the air enters again in the figure you can see this is your air inlet from where the air is entering. Here a venturi is being formed this is a venturi the air is flowing through this venturi. So we all know that when the air passes through this venturi there will be high velocity of air here resulting in low pressure. Now these are your impact tubes you can see these yellow tubes here these are the impact tubes which are sensing the air pressure just before the venturi when the air is entering. Then on this side on the extreme left if you see this red, red section this is your air diaphragm this red section this is your air diaphragm and on both sides of the air diaphragm air is acting. Now the air is being channeled through this from the impact tube the air is sensing this air just before the venturi the impact tubes are being se are sensing this air just before the venturi and this air the impact air is channeled to the right side of the diaphragm. You can see the yellow portion this yellow portion is your impact pressure to the impact tubes. The venturi is sense is channeling this pressure the pre air pressure the low pressure air is being channeled to the left side of the diaphragm. So you have seen the air diaphragm and on the two sides of the air diaphragm you have air pressure on the left side is the low pressure and on the right side is the high pressure that is the impact pressure. So basically low pressure on the left side high pressure on the right side this results in a pressure differential across the diaphragm and this pressure differential is called the air metering force which has the tendency since the high pressure is on the right side of the diaphragm and low pressure on the left side of the diaphragm. So this air metering force has the tendency to shift the diaphragm to the left. So basically air diaphragm has got two pressures on both sides of the diaphragm. Another red section if you observe this is your fuel diaphragm. You can see the second red section this is your fuel diaphragm and this fuel diaphragm also experiences two pressures. From this line you have the unmetered fuel coming on one side of the fuel diaphragm and on another side of the fuel diaphragm you have the metered fuel pressure coming in. So the fuel diaphragm is experiencing two fuel pressures since it is a fuel diaphragm. So fuel is entering on the two sides of the fuel diaphragm on the left side is your unmetered fuel and on the right side is your metered fuel pressure. Now this diaphragm is also connected to a ball valve you can see here there is a ball valve here this black ball here you can see this black there is a ball valve attached to the fuel diaphragm which opens or closes the port here which is the fuel port and it is fuel is going out of this thing. So this 
fuel pressure differential across the fuel diaphragm is the fuel metering force because on left side you have the unmetered fuel and on right side you have the metered fuel. So, there has to be a pressure differential on unmetered fuel pressure is a higher pressure, metered fuel pressure is a lower pressure. So, again this fuel metering force, this pressure differential due to the fuel metering force is on the right side. So, this fuel metering force has the tendency to move the diaphragm to the right side. The air metering force has the tendency to move the diaphragm to the left side. So, basically the air metering force and fuel metering force are opposite to each other and depending on the air flow, depending on the flow of air, depending on the throttle opening, the force on the force across the diaphragm varies and in turn it will move the ball wall accordingly. So, depending on the air metering force, if the air metering force is more than the fuel metering force, it will move the ball wall to the left and this port will open and more fuel will go out. Now, when your fuel metering force is sufficient, either it is equal to the air metering force or more than the met air metering force, in that case this ball valve will move to the right and it will close the port. So, the fuel delivery will be lesser. So, depending on the air flow coming in, the forces across the diaphragm vary and accordingly the fuel is metered out. So, we now see that it is the volume of air, the air being inducted in which is governing the fuel being delivered. So, let us see the air flow section, the fuel is metered in direct ratio to the volume of air being consumed by the engine at a given time. So, we have just discussed that the fuel is metered in direct ratio to the volume of air being consumed by the engine at a given time. <coughs> the venturi pressure and the impact pressure in the throttle body is sensed and channeled to the two sides of an air diaphragm. We have just now discussed that the venturi pressure and the impact pressure, they are channeled to the two sides of an air diaphragm and this is a measure of air flow consumption. And the impact pressure is acting on the right side and the venturi pressure on the left side of the air diaphragm. So, your venturi pressure is on the left side the impact pressure on the right side, this is creating a pressure differential called the air metering force. Throttle wall movement varies the air flow through the engine, yes, increased air flow increases air velocity through the venturi and air pressure drop. We have discussed that this increased air flow will increase the velocity of air and will result in pressure drop and this pressure drop is sensed to the left side of the air diaphragm. The pressure on the left side of the diaphragm is lowered, the pressure at the impact tube remains relatively constant. Now, the pressure at the impact tube since it is just before the venturi, it remains relatively constant. So, with more throttle opening, you have more pressure drop on the left side of the diaphragm and impact tube pressure almost staying constant, you have more air metering force resulting in movement of the diaphragm to the left causing the ball wall to move left and more fuel delivery. A pressure differential impact minus suction thus acting across the air diaphragm is referred to as the air metering force. So, we have just discussed that what is an air metering force. It is used over the entire range of operation of the injection system as a measurement of the volume of air consumed. So, this is the measurement of volume of air consumed and this is used over the entire range of operation of the fuel injection system. This pressure differential becomes a usable force that is equal to the area of the diaphragm times the pressure difference. So, this is a useful force and it is equal to the area of the diaphragm times the pressure difference. This pressure differential moves the air diaphragm to the left opening the ball wall. So, we have 
red we have just discussed that the movement of the air diaphragm to left opens the ball valve here in the figure you can see that these are the impact tubes these are the impact tubes which are sensing the impact pressure and channeling them to the right side of the air diaphragm now another section is the regulator section we have read that the injector has got three sections air flow section regulator section and the fuel metering section so we read about the air flow section now let us see what is the regulator section the regulator section comprises of a fuel diaphragm so in this regulator section you have a fuel diaphragm we have seen that there is an air diaphragm and the second diaphragm is the fuel diaphragm just now discussed again the fuel diaphragm has two fuel pressures one is the unmetered fuel pressure on the left side and the metered fuel pressure on the right side again a pressure differential is being created across the fuel diaphragm which is called a fuel metering force and this fuel metering force is acting opposite to the air metering force movement of the fuel metering move, move, sorry movement of the fuel diaphragm results all in the movement of the ball valve and accordingly your fuel is metered so let us see what is the regulator section the regulator section comprises of a fuel diaphragm fuel inlet pressure is channeled to one side of the fuel diaphragm and fuel metered fuel pressure to the other side in the figure you can see left side this is your meet, unmetered fuel pressure right side you have the metered fuel pressure the metered fuel pressure is the pressure after the fuel has passed through the fuel strainer and the manual mixture control rotary plate so the metered fuel pressure is already coming through the fuel strainer and the manual mixture control so it is a metered fuel pressure a lower pressure metered fuel pressure is on the ball side of the diaphragm so here you can see in the figure the ball side of the diaphragm this is your metered fuel pressure the differential pressure across the fuel diaphragm is called the fuel metering force so this differential pressure across the fuel diaphragm this is called the fuel metering force the fuel diaphragm opposes the air metering force yes we have just now discussed that the fuel diaphragm force the fuel diaphragm is opposing the air metering force the fuel flow is controlled by a ball valve attached to the fuel diaphragm the ball valve controls the orifice opening through the forces acting across it so this ball valve this is controlling the fuel flow through the orifice opening and the ball valve is being controlled by the forces acting across the diaphragm the difference between the pressure acting on the diaphragms determine the distance the ball valve opens so the difference of pressures acting on the diaphragms they will determine the ball valve opening here in the figure you can see this is a, this is a diaphragm this red section this is your diaphragm and this is your ball which is your ball valve this difference in pressure acting on the diaphragm is proportional to the air flow through the injector we have discussed this earlier that the difference in pressure acting on the diaphragm is proportional to the air flow through the injector the rate of fuel flow is thus determined by the volume of air flow so the rate of fuel flow is dependent on the volume of air flow at low power settings the pressure drop across the venturi is not significant as a result regulation of fuel is not consistent so we know that at low power settings the pressure drop is low across the venturi and the regulation of fuel is not consistent to overcome this problem a constant head idle spring is provided for a constant fuel differential pressure which allows consistent regulation of fuel at low power settings so if we see the figure here this spring there is a spring provided here which is the constant head idle spring 
So we are talking about this is spring, constant head idle spring. This constant head idle spring is provided for a constant fuel differential pressure which allows consistent regulation of fuel at low power settings. So the next section is the fuel metering section. We have seen about the airflow section, we have seen the regulator section and the, now the fuel metering section. The fuel metering section meters and controls the fuel flow to the flow divider. So the purpose of the fuel metering system is to meter and control the fuel flow to the flow divider. So metering section is basically metering the fuel and providing it to the flow divider. It is attached to the air metering section. So this fuel metering section, this is attached to the air metering section. It has an inlet fuel strainer, a manual mixture control valve, idle valve and main metering jet. So here in the figure, if you can see, this is your fuel strainer, the inlet. This is the point through which the fuel enters inside the injector. This is your fuel inlet, inlet and there is a strainer, a filter inside it. A manual mixture control valve, in the lower figure you see there is a manual mixture valve also. Idle valve, there is an idle valve here, you can see here and a main metering jet and these are your metering jets. The idle valve is connected to the throttle valve by means of a mechanical linkage. So this idle valve is connected to a throttle valve to the throttle valve by mechanical linkages. With the manual mixture control in rich condition, the lever touches the rich stop and full rich mixture is provided. Now when you place your mixture control in the full rich condition, the lever will touch the rich stop and your full rich mixture will be delivered. When the manual mixture control is moved from rich position to idle cutoff position, the mixture is progressively getting leaner and as the mixture control moves to the idle cutoff position, the fuel supply completely stops. So the mixture control lever in full rich condition, your lever touches the rich stop and rich fuel is being de delivered. When you move the mixture control lever from rich condition to the leaner condition, gradually your fuel becomes leaner from rich to lean and then finally when the mixture control lever is placed in the idle cutoff condition, your fuel delivery is completely interrupted, is completely stopped and the engine cuts off. The idle speed and idle mixture can be adjusted externally. So in field adjustments, during the field, during the course of operations, during the maintenance, the adjustments possible in the injector are idle speed adjustment and idle mixture adjustment. Here in the figure, you can see this is a figure of a fuel injector. You can see here, this place, this is the, you can observe a flywheel. This flywheel, through this flywheel, we can adjust the idle mixture and through this, we can adjust the idle speed. So this is basically a throttle lever, which is attached to the, by means of cable, it is attached to the control in the cockpit. So when you move the throttle control in the cockpit, this lever moves and your throttle operates here. And we have just seen that your idle valve is attached to the throttle and this is your idle adjustment screw. From here, you can adjust your idle speed and from here, you can adjust the mixture, idle mixture. And some injector models also have a power enrichment jet in this section. So this was all about the injector. We have seen that in the fuel injection system, the fuel from the engine driven fuel pump is coming to the fuel injector. The fuel injector had 
three parts airflow section regulator section and fuel metering section according to the volume of air flow the fuel is metered by the injector and this metered fuel is being supplied to the flow divider so let us see what is the flow divider this flow divider the metered fuel from the fuel injector is supplied to the engine through a flow divider and each fuel discharge nozzle per cylinder now the fuel metered by the injector is coming to the flow divider and the basic purpose of the flow divider is to equally distribute the fuel to the respective discharge nozzles fuel discharge nozzles in each cylinder so this flow divider it is metering the fuel it is getting the metered fuel from the injector and supplying the engine fuel to the respective discharge nozzles the flow divider has a valve diaphragm and a spring so here in the sketch you can see it has a valve it has diaphragms it has a springs and the valve is spring loaded to the closed position so in a normal case when the system is not operating the valve is closed the spring keeps the valve closed the fuel flow path to the nozzle closes isolating each nozzle from the others now when the this valve is closed the fuel flow path to the respective nozzles is also closed and there is no supply of fuel to the nozzles and to the cylinders the flow divider ensures the flow divider the basic purpose of the flow divider is to equally distribute metered fuel to the nozzles at and just above idle so at idle speeds and at just above idle speeds this flow divider will distribute the metered fuel equally to the nozzles and it also isolates each nozzle from all other nozzles so the flow divider since it is distributing fuel equally to the nozzles each nozzle acts as an independent unit and this flow divider isolates each nozzle from other nozzles metered fuel from the injector enters the chamber below the diaphragm in the flow divider so this metered fuel from the injector this is entering the flow divider there is a diaphragm we have seen there is a diaphragm and this diaphragm is also spring loaded now this metered fuel is entering the chamber below the diaphragm this fuel pressure acting below the diaphragm will open the valve and allow the fuel to flow to the respective nozzles in case if the fuel pressure is low then the spring spring will gradually close the valve and the fuel flow to the nozzles will be interrupted at idle fuel pressure is only sufficient to move the flow divider valve slightly open so at idle speeds when the throttle is at the idle range the fuel pressure is just sufficient to move the flight flow divider valve slightly open providing accurate distribution of fuel to each nozzle for smooth idle so when the valve is just open because at idle your fuel pressure is not sufficient so it is just opening the valve this slight opening of the valve will provide equal distribution of fuel to each nozzle for smooth idling here in the figure if you see this this you can see this is your idle mark and this opening of the valve this opening of the valve it opens slightly so that you have this much of opening and fuel is passing through this opening to the nozzles it is being equally distributed at the idle speeds also so with equal distribution of fuel at idle speeds you have smooth idling 
at speeds above idle as the throttle is opened, metered fuel pressure from the injector increases at the flow divider inlet. Now, when the throttle is increased, you have more volume of airflow. With more volume of airflow, you have more metered fuel coming out of the injector. With more metered fuel coming out of the injector, it is coming to the flow divider. Now, with more metered fuel from the injector at the flow divider inlet, you have more fuel pressure below the diaphragm in the flow divider, resulting in more opening of the valve. So, here in the diagram, if you see that when the opening is increased, so this is your maximum flow to which the valve can open. This was your idle, this was the opening for the idle range and this is the opening for the maximum flow. So, with more metered fuel pressure at the flow divider inlet, you have more opening of the valve in the flow divider and with more opening of the flow divider valve, you have more fuel being delivered to the nozzles. The increased metered fuel pressure from the injector gradually moves the flow divider valve open against the spring pressure until the area of the slot opening to each nozzle is greater than the area of the fuel restrictor in the nozzle. So, this is your maximum position to which the fuel this valve can open and more fuel is being delivered to the nozzles. Now, inside the nozzle also you have the flow restrict you have the restrictor and this valve will open this valve in the flow divider will open against the spring pressure until the area of the slot opening to each nozzle is greater than the area of the fuel restrictor in the nozzle. So, in the nozzle there is a fuel restrictor we will see that there is a in the nozzle there is a fuel restrictor and this when the area of the opening in this flow divider is more than the area of the fuel restrictor in the nozzle in that case from that point onwards the fuel discharge nozzles ensure equal distribution of metered fuel flow to the cylinders. So, till the point your opening of the valve in the flow divider is less than the area of the fuel restrictor in the nozzle, the flow divider is equally distributing the fuel is equal uh, is responsible for equal distribution of metered fuel flow to the cylinders and from the point when the valve opening is valve in the flow divider is opened more than the restrictor opening in the nozzle from that point onwards the fuel discharge nozzle ensure equal distribution of metered fuel flow to the cylinders. Here in the figure you can see this is your flow divider, this red this is your metered fuel, this is coming metered fuel and depending on the opening you can see this is your valve, this, depending on the opening the fuel is being supplied to the nozzles, to the respective nozzles. With the mixture control in idle cutoff position, fuel supply from the injector to flow divider drops to 0. So, when your mixture control is placed in the idle cutoff position, the fuel injector will no longer supply the fuel to the flow divider and engine will come to a stop. With zero fuel pressure at the flow divider, the spring forces the flow divider valve to the closed position. So, when there is no fuel supply from the injector to the flow divider, the spring pressure on top of the diaphragm will move the valve to the closed position and will interrupt the fuel flow to the nozzle. So, there will not be any supply of fuel to the nozzle to the cylinders and there will be no combustion resulting in complete stoppage of the engine. Thank you.